The following program is made possible by Grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company. <laughs> Varsity Quiz Bowl, and today, Jean Andre, Ford Mayhew, Ricky Leon, and Troy Samparito from Ecole Classique will meet in a battle of quick recall, Tony Toops, Peter Muller, Joseph Fennerty, and John Equier from Jesuit High School. The alternate from the Cole Classic is Bert Vertigetz, and the coach, Cheryl Welsh. And the alternate from Jesuit High School is David Howell, and the coach, Sal Anselmo. And now, here's our moderator, Mel Levitt. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Welcome once again to Varsity Quiz Bowl. This is game 59 for this year in our year-long elimination tournament to determine a champion. It pits our defending champion, Jesuit High School, against a very strong, very impressive Ecole Classique team. In just a moment, we'll get underway, but first off, I'd like you to meet our judge, Dr. Ann Akers. Our score is Phyllis Hartley, Associate Director of Records at UNO. Phyllis has been with us, low these many seasons here in Channel 12, and she's certainly a part of our show. And here's Cliff Beal, who's our uh, recognizer. Cliff is a student of communications at Loyola. Let's give him a round of applause. Then <laughs> well, we'll get going. All right, teams, whoever wins today, of course, moves right into the semifinals and be one of the four survivors vying for that title. We'll begin with this short question leading up to a land yap of 30 points, and here it is. Your first face-off for 10. What was Eleanor Roosevelt's maiden name? Echo Classique Mayhew. Roosevelt. That's right. She was a cousin of Franklin. That's a not-so-trick question if you watch the uh, fascinating Eleanor Franklin series. They were cousins. You have a land yap coming up now. It's 30 points, it's audio, and before I ask the questions, we're gonna play this music, listen. Baby, look at me And tell me what you see You ain't see the best of me yet Give me time, I'll make you forget the rest I got more All right, I'm assuming that True observers of the entertainment scene would recognize what you just heard. At any rate, the first question is this. This is the Academy Award winning title song from what blockbuster hit motion picture of 1980? Oh, fame. Fame is correct. You've got 10 points, a chance at 10 more. If you can name the actress who sang the song. Irene Cara. That's right. And for a total of 30, the motion picture fame tells a story of students in what unique high school? The exact title, please. Performing Arts. Performing Arts. Oh, New, York New York Performing Arts High School. All right. New York Performing Arts High School. That is correct. You've got 30 points. They go for a seat. Nicole breaks on top against the defending champ. Here's another face-off, teams. We're going for a land yap at 20 this time. This author wrote two books of a projected trilogy that dealt with the struggles and exploitation of the early American wheat farmers. The completed volumes were entitled The Octopus and The Pit. For 10 points, can you name the author? A famous American author. His name was Frank Norris. All right, another face-off for a quick 10. What term is used to identify a peculiarity of language or phraseology for which there is no logical grammatical explanation? For example, not a word did he say. The term Jesuit used in all languages. Idiom. Idiom's correct for 10 points. Jesuits on the board. Trailing now 40-10, you got a chance to narrow that very quickly with a 20-point land yap if you answer both parts. On August 1st, 1946, President Truman approved the McMahon Act, which set up a commission that was devoted to the development of a new energy source and its application to war and peace. For 10 points, name the commission. Name the commission. The Atomic Energy Commission. That's right, for 10. For 10 more, and a total of 20. Identify the Pacific Island where on November 1st, 1952, the United States became the first nation to test a new kind of bomb, the hydrogen bomb. We'll ask for an answer. In a wee talk. Correct. 20 points for Jesuit. They go at least 40, 30. Here's a face off. We're going for a land yap at 20. Astronomers at California Institute of Technology have now detailed an immense blob of matter streaming away from 3C273. For 10 points, what is 3C273? A giant star. No, I'm afraid that's not specific. Have to be more specific. I'll repeat now. According to rules, no appearance of consultation must ring to answer. 
Astronomers at California Institute of Technology have now detailed an immense blob of matter streaming away from 3C273. For 10 points, what is 3C273? Specifically. Equal White dwarf? No, it's a quasar. A quasar. We'll have another face-off. We're going for a, for a 20-point land yet. This actor has made a hundred or more motion pictures. The latest Lion of the Desert for 10 points. Name Jeff this man Mueller. also. Anthony Quinn. Correct. Anthony Quinn for 10 points. <laughs> all right, you're trailing by 5, 40, 35, and here's a lanyap that could put you ahead. It's 20 points in all in two parts. Identify the following men of Greek history. First, according to legend, this orator learned to speak with his mouth full of pebbles. Demosthenes. Correct. Second, this philosopher is pictured carrying a, a lantern in search of an honest man. Who was he? Diogenes. You have them both. 20 points. <laughs> Jesuit 55, a coal 40. Here's a face-off. We're going for a lanyap of 20. Two waterfalls, the Kukinan and Angel, are among the highest in total drop in the world. Both are located in the same country. Echo Classique, Saparito. Venezuela. You've got it for 10 points. <laughs> both located in Venezuela. Tighten the score to 50-55, trailing by five, a Cole, and here's a chance to pick up 20. I'm sure you'd, you knew that I'd, uh, I'd probably ask you about the Kentucky Derby, maybe. Hmm? But I don't think you probably guessed that I would ask you for five points who came in second. I'm doing that because I'm perverse. And also, what his most recent big win was, also for five points. Okay, it was a uh, wood chopper right. and the uh, Louisiana Derby. Right, on both counts. If he'd won, he'd have been the first horse, I believe, since Black Gold to win both races. Okay, you have a chance at 10 more. For an additional five points each, who was his trainer, wood chopper's trainer, and who was the jockey? Who was the jockey on board when he finished right behind the winner? All right, we'll ask for an answer, please. Uh, Cordero as a jockey and Delp as a trainer. No, they were involved in the derby, but his trainer was Johnny Campo. His jockey was Jorge Velasquez. You picked up 10 more points at Cole Classique, enough to go ahead. Yes, Score is uh, a Cole 60, Jesuit 55. All right, we have another face-off. We're going for a lanyap of 30. This vitamin is essential for converting food to energy. It's found in liver, tuna, whole grains, and dried Jesuit beans. Mark. Vitamin B. No, I'm afraid that's... That's uh, incorrect. That's not sufficient. Uh, we'll refer it now, of course, to a coal. This vitamin is essential for converting food to energy. It's found in liver and tuna and whole grains, dried beans and peas, among other things. The best known deficiency symptom is, is pellagra. For 10 points, can you name this B vitamin? It's one of the B vitamins, but which one? Niacin. That's right. Niacin is one of the descriptions. Sometimes called B3, also referred to as niacin or nicotinic acid. This entitles you to a 30-point land yap. There are six major islands in the Hawaiian chain, majors. For five points apiece, name them. What are the major Hawaiian islands? Okay, it's Hawaii. We'll give you 20 seconds now to compile your list. And then ask for that list from the captain, please. Okay, go ahead. I all right, ready? Mm -hmm. uh, Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii. Kauai. All right. Kauai. And Kauai. All right. And your time is out. That's it. You've got all those. The others are Lanai, Lanai, and Molokai. 20 points. A call plus eight. <laughs> you just heard the buzzer. That means we're going to embark on a round of rapid fire. You all know the rules in this particular case, but remember one thing. There's only one answer per question. We don't have referrals, and the two-minute clock is a basic factor. We move along very quickly. Today's rapid fire round will have as its theme one is very close to us, or should be, Louisiana, the state we're in. With that in mind, here we go. Number one, the southeasternmost parish. Jesuit Muller. Plaquemine. Correct, for 10. The river which farms the Texas, Louisiana, bound. Sabine. Sabine is correct. The state capital. Jesuit Fennity. Baton Rouge. Correct. Full name of the governor who served a total of nine years. Jesuit Muller. It's Errol Hitchman. Long. Errol Long. Must bring when you actually get recognition. Number of U.S. senators is... Eva Classique Mayhew. Two. Correct. Year it first became a state, Louisiana. Eva Classique Mayhew. 1812. Correct. Number of electoral votes we Jesuit have. Jesuit Muller. Ten. Correct. State song. Jesuit Muller. Is, uh... Give me Louisiana. 
Give me Louisiana. Not you are my sunshine. A lot of people think it is. Number of U.S. representatives is what? Jessup Muller. Eight. Correct. Our state motto? Jessup Muller. Union Justice Confidence. That is correct. Number of senators in the state legislature Jessup Muller. is 39. The governor of the state is? Echo Plus C. Mayhew. Dave Treen. That's correct. Date of adoption of the present Constitution. When was it adopted? Present one? Jesuit Fenerty. 1976? No, 74. Number of members in the state House of Representatives is what? It's 105. State tree is what? Echo Plus C. Cypress Street. Cypress Street. That's correct. It's a ball cypress to be specific. The civil code is also known as what? Echo Plus C. Mayhew. Napoleonic code. That's correct. Number of parishes? Jesuit Muller. 48. No, it's 64. The state bird, be specific. Jesuit Fenerty. Brown Pelican. That's right. Author of the poem about the Acadians, Evangeline. Echo Plus C. Mayhew. Longfellow. That's right. What Avery Island is most famous for? Jesuit Fenerty. Tabasco. That's right. Of the still existing carnival organizations, the first to put on a parade. Number one. Echo Plus C. Mayhew. Comus. That's right. The general who directed the American forces in the Battle of New Orleans was called. Echo Plus C. Mayhew. Jackson. That's right. The football game on New Year's Day in the Super Echo Class C. Mayhew. Sugar Bowl. That's right. The festival at the fairgrounds in April and Jesse, May. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. Jazz and Heritage Festival. That's right. Miles of coastline along the Gulf to the nearest Jesse 100. 400, 400. 400. The largest lake is what? Echo Class C. Mayhew. Hunter Train. That's right. And there is the buzzer. That ends it. All right. All right, I can see a rather roaring round of applause over here because Jesuit, the defending champ, is behind right now. But they're never behind for long, so we ought to have a heck of a second half. We're also going to consult, the judge says, on an answer concerning the jockey and trainer. It may be we had the wrong pair. We'll be back, though, in, in just a moment, so stay tuned. Nothing but mystery. All of us know what pain is. It's something that hurts, that causes discomfort, that alters our capacity to function. And while we don't know exactly how someone else interprets his or her pain, we do know how ours feels, and we can sympathize. Hi, I'm Peter Graves. Join me when we look at some encouraging new techniques for dealing with chronic pain, next time on Here's to Your Health. See it Sunday evening at 6 here on Channel 12. There may have been some confusion on that question about the Kentucky Derby as to the uh, trainer and the jockey for wood chopper. We had the wrong names, so did a Cole. But no shame on either one of us, since there were about 22 horses in the race anyhow. The jockey was Eddie De La Husse, and the trainer was J.M. Gaver. And that's something I think we'll all remember. All right. We're going to talk to the, the contestants here before we get into the second half. And our question is just an open-ender about uh, what's your reaction to what's happened to you since you were on Varsity Quiz Bowl and on TV, John? Well, it's taught me not to be afraid of the camera. And uh, it's pretty much alleviated my fear of exposing my ignorance, you know, or my intelligence, whatever the case may be. Right. And um, it's given me a lot of opportunities in school and encouraged me to study harder. Well, that's very interesting. Ford, how about you, Captain? Well, uh, obviously, you learn a lot more. And uh, I've had to push myself a little harder. Memory, I haven't always been known for having a, a good memory. I tend to forget a lot of things, but it's, uh -huh. it's helped me a lot. And plus, I find that I can have a lot, a little more poise when I have to sit down and talk with somebody. I can get my point across better hmm. uh, in some kind of maybe a little pressure situation. Yeah. Well, you know, I've, I've heard a number of youngsters say the same thing. It gives them more poise, and they're less likely to hang back. Mm -hmm. They'll now come out and say it if they believe it or they feel it. Ricky, how about you? Well, you know, it's given me a lot of chance to learn a bunch of trivia, learn how much I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot. <laughs> and uh, also. Um, I look a lot heavier on TV, so I'm, not, I'm about 10 pounds lighter than I really look. <laughs> okay, let's not get into the cosmetics. We'll be here all day. Oh, Troy, how about you? Well, it's <laughs> helped me pick up a few things here and there, just general knowledge. And I also had to follow in my brother's footsteps, who was the captain of last year's team. Uh, that's not an easy so, assignment. No, really. not really. Well, we have really been delighted to have a Cole with us. And, of course, uh, they do such a great job. We've got a great group out here. Let's hear it from you. A. Cole Garcia, consistently one of the most successful teams on this, on this competition, of course, has been Jesuit, our defending champions. What's it meant to you all? How about you, Tony? Well, I enjoy the uh, competition with the other schools, and I also enjoy the exposure to television and everything. It's something new to me. I've never done this before, and it's taught me uh, a lot about being in public and everything. 
you feel more self-assurance when you're in front of the... To an extent. Mm -hmm. I think everybody does. Peter? Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's a unique type of exposure for uh, people with academic skills as opposed to other types, athletic, that get exposure in school. Mm -hmm. And you seek it, I know, young man, because you were in the Silver Scribe and had about three or four yeah, awards. Well, um, my teammate here, Tony, won the Silver Scribe, in fact. <laughs> Congratulations. No, I noticed both of you were prominent. Right. And that's another example of how these young people get out. Joseph, how about you? Well, I think it looks pretty good on the college transcript or <laughs> application. Joseph's but, the practical man. <laughs> yeah. It does enhance it, though. John, what about you? Uh, I basically enjoyed for the competition. I enjoy uh, competing on the other side. I like sports, and this is another side of competition. That's interesting. You have the same elements, as a matter of fact, as you do in sports in this game, in many cases. Jesuit, we're glad to have you with us. Now let's get on with the game. Second half coming up. This is a quarterfinal round match. The winner will advance to the semis and be one of the four teams left. All right, we have a face-off. We're leading up to a visual land. You have to score as a Cole 190, Jesuit 110. Face-off is this for a quick 10. Name the British Ocean liner sunk by a German U-boat in 1950. Jesuit Lusitania. That is correct for 10 points. <laughs> Jesuit on the board quickly in the second half, and we have a visual land yap now of 20 points. Uh, Jesuit, we would like you to direct your, your attention to the monitors here in front of you, and you'll see a photograph of a famous, famous landmark. Okay. It's a little blurry here and indistinct, but I think maybe the questions will illuminate it. For five points each, answer the following questions. Where would you be if you were standing by this landmark? You notice that's a, that's a public fountain. You'd be in Rome. That's correct. All right, you got five. For five more, what is the name of this very famous fountain? Um, the Fountain of Venus. No, it's the Trevi, Trevi Fountain. In what two movies was this fountain featured? Prominently. We don't mean just tour shots. Uh, One was three coins in the fountain, the other was Roman Holiday. And uh, you've picked up five more points, Jesuit High School. Scores 190 to 125, we'll move on to another face-off. Leading up now to Alani at 20, the Pope is the official head of the Roman Catholic Church, of course. For 10 points, what's the title of the official leader of the Jesuit Anglican? Muller, the Archbishop of Canterbury. That's correct, Archbishop of Canterbury. You picked up 10. Here's a lanyap of 20 for 10 points apiece. Tell me the title of the great British epic poem that tells the story of Adam and Eve, their temptation and their fall, and the author of that poem. Paradise Lost by John Milton. You've got both for 20 points, Jesuit. <laughs> All right, you trail now 190 to 155, nibbling away at that lead. Here's a face-off. We're going for a lanyap of 20 teams. The greatest native Hawaiian of history for the United Jesuit Hawaii. Muller. Queen Lilakalana. No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. We'll repeat for a coal. Now, no consultation or even the appearance. The greatest native Hawaiian of history forged a united Hawaii in 1790 and formed an independent nation that lasted until... Epa plus six, King Kamehameha. That is correct. King Kamehameha. <laughs> okay, you rounded your score at 200, and you have a chance to pick up 20 more. For 10 points at Cole Classique, who was the first president to travel to a foreign country while in office? And for another 10 points, what country did he visit on that trip? All right, we'll ask for an answer, please. It's Theodore Roosevelt, and he traveled to Panama. We have another face-off. Going now for a land yap at 20. For a quick 10, name the British physician who, in 1796, discovered that cowpox material could be used as a vaccine. Class eight, Mayhew. Jenner? Correct, you are. Dr. Edward Jenner. <laughs> the vaccine for smallpox was discovered by Dr. Jenner, and here's a 20-point lanyard. They had the same last name, and one was a U.S. congressman. Same last name. One was a U.S. congressman, one was a U.S. educator, one was a 20th century German novelist who lived in the United States, migrated here. For five points, tell me their common last name. And for five points each, tell me each of their properly identified first names. Now, the pronunciation in one case, I might add, is a little different than in the other two because of the ethnic background. Anyone want to take a shot? Give you just a few more seconds. The common name is Man, or in the case of the novelist, Mon, 
Congressman was James Robert Mann, the educator Horace Mann, the author Thomas Mann of Magic Mountain fame. We have another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20 for 10 points. Name the famous composer of the dramatic oratorio, Judas Maccabeus. Jesuit Muller. Mendelssohn. No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. Can you take it? The cold classic, anyone? The cold classic, Mayhew. Tchaikovsky? No, it was George Frederick Handel. Handel. We have another face-off for a quick 10. What is the name of a system of fortifications used in World War II and on the eastern front of France? Jesuit Muller. The Maginot Line. That's right. 10 points. The impregnable Maginot Line, which the Germans simply outflanked, particularly since the guns wouldn't turn around. We have a land yap at 20. For 10 points, you trail by 50. Name the World War I commander-in-chief of, um, of the American Expeditionary Forces. For another 10 points, what was his nickname? World Pershing, War Blackjack. You got them both. 20 more points. The score is 210 to 180. A. Cole is leading. Here's a face-off. We're, we're leading up now to a land yap of 20 points. For 10 points, with what field of endeavor or endeavor do you associate the following terms? Sheet, catch, halyard, spinnaker, sailing. That is correct. Spinnaker, mizzen, gall. All of them sailing. You're trailing by 20. If you can answer both parts of this question, you will be tied. All right, the 1981 Pulitzer Prize in fiction was won posthumously by a native New Orleanian. For 10 points apiece, name him, and then tell me the exact title of his winning novel. His name is Tool. Full name. John Kennedy Tool. Correct, for 10. For 10 more and a tie? A the title? A Confederacy of Dunces. You're tied. 20 points, I give you. 210 all. You've got 20 points to land yet coming up now, teams. This is a short face-off. For 10 points, which South American country lays claim to Easter Island? Jesuit Muller. Chile. Chile's correct. For 10 points, you broke the tie. Jesuits going back in front, 220 to 210. Here's a land yap at 20. The Academy of Country Music has made its awards for the year. For five points apiece, name the following. First, a man selected male vocalist of the year was, was whom? I delegate this to Mr. Equier. Okay. Uh, Jones. Correct. Top song of the year. Remember? It was He Stopped Loving Her Today. The woman selected entertainer of the year. Mandrell. Correct. Barbara. Top female vocalist of the year. Parton. Barton is correct. Three of the four is 15 points. Jesuit High School. We have another face-off. We're going for a land yap of 30. Very close game. Very big question. This is it. The first transcontinental, coast to coast, paved highway was completed in 1913. For 10 points, name it. What is it called? Echo Classy, Mayhew. Trans-America Highway? No, that's incorrect. Jesuit, can you take it? Jesuit Toops. Route 66? No, it was called the Lincoln Highway, and it was actually Highway 30 most of the way. Another face-off now for Quick 10, leading up to 30. In the letter system for identifying blood groups, what type is the most common? Echo Classy, Mayhew. Oh, is right. The most common for 10 points. Now you trail by only 15 with a chance at 30 to go ahead. For 10 apiece now, tell me first, what character in English literature marries Rowena, though he is loved by Rebecca? Almost all of us had to read it in high school. Ivanhoe? That's right, for 10 points. And you now trail by five in a book by the same author. What character in English literature is loved by Elizabeth, although he is married to Amy? Remember this? Kenilworth? No, it was Robert... That was the name of the book. The character was Robert Dudley, Earl of Essex. Now, one more for 10 could put you ahead. Who is the author of Scott. both those books? Sir Walter Scott. You've got it, you leave. And a call is back in front, 240 to 235. Here's another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20, and it's quick. What are mouflons? M-O-U-F-L-O-N-S. Jesuit Muller. Type of pastry. No, a cold classy. A cold classy, separate. What's that? Clothing? No, they're sheep. Wild mountain sheep, native to Corsica and Sardinia. We have another face-off. He's been called the successor to Alfred Hitchcock as a master of the suspense film for 10 points. Ec Jesuit Equier. De Palma. That's right, Brian De Palma, the man who did dress to kill. And Jesuits back in front by five. A land yap at 20. Beautiful and ornate writing, almost an art, has been in vogue for a number of years, enough so that many school children are learning it as an elective. Two names actually not truly interchangeable are used for this type of writing. One of these terms is actually a name given to the technique of writing with a brush. The other term designates a type in which the characters slant up and to the right. 
For ten points apiece, what are these two names? Calligraphy and black letter. No, calligraphy is number one. That's ten points. Italics is the other. You picked up ten more. You're ahead 255 to 240 Jesuit. We have another face-off. We're going for a land for 20. During the 19th century, this nation, this nation lost three wars to Russia. The Greeks won the Jesuit Muller, from Turkey. Turkey is right for ten points. We're going to list about seven other wars they've lost. One of the most defeated nations in history. We have a lanyap of 20. Britannia piece, name the play, opening in 1920 that had the beat of a tom-tom running all through it. The name of the author of that play considered to be 20th century America's greatest playwright. Beat of a tom-tom. Anyone? Eugene O'Neill was the author. That's correct for 10. For 10 more, it was, it was um, Emperor Jones. You picked up 10 more. You're now 275 to 240. Here's a face-off. We're going for a land of 20. For 10 points. 10 points. Name the 20th century Welsh poet who wrote Do Not Go Jesse Gentle. Moore. Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas is right. Do Not Go Gentle. And on that good night, we have a landing up at 20 points. A famous play deals with the moral decay and ruin set in the South in 1900. The story of the Hubbard family depicts unfavorably the rise of industrialism and condemns the new breed of Southerners. For 10 points, we'll never get it out. The play was The Little Foxes. The authoress was Lillian Hellman. Unofficially, Jesuit appears to be the winner. We'll be back in just a minute to validate that final score. Right after this. With these drops of water, the River Nile begins its 4,000-mile journey northward to the Mediterranean, crossing half a continent and 7,000 years of recorded human history. On the Nile, man has preserved some of his noblest monuments. Today, it is the river itself that may be most in need of his protection. See it Sunday evening at 8 on Channel 12. It was a marvelous game, I hope you agree. Jesuit 285, Ecole Classique 240. The winner, defending champion, Jesuit High School, and they'll go right on into the semifinals. <laughs> Boy, you had a test. I think they'd be first to agree that they got the supreme test of their, their season right here. Ecole, I believe three of the four will graduate, and that'll be, uh, what, Mr. Mayhew, Mr. Leon, and Saparito. And John, you're going to be back with us again next year. We look, we look forward to that. Great game. Great team. Now, according to our game plan, it'll be next week the Jesuit will return in the semifinals when the teams will have boiled down to just four. They will play the winner of tomorrow's game between St. Martin's and St. Paul's. We hope to see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> The questions on Varsity Quiz Bowl are prepared and authenticated by the WIES editorial research staff and known only in advance to the quiz master, producer, judge, and researcher. All 64 schools participating in our year-long tournament are matched by blind draw. Selections of team members and methods of preparation are the sole responsibility of the schools and their coaches. The preceding program was made possible in part by a grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company.